What's going on everyone? Welcome back to The Pair. Today we're going to be doing my 2024 AFL predictions. We're going to be predicting the ladder, the Coleman medalist, the Brownlow medalist, and of course the Premiers for 2024. After an exciting finish to 2023 and a very close season, this year proves to be no different with teams improving, teams looking like they might slide, and those teams like Port Adelaide who just you don't know where are going to end up. So let's get straight into it. Let's do my 2024 season predictions. 18th to 1st, dual teams have gained uh, different players and different um, trades and different draft picks. They're all going to be proved to do one thing, and that is to see if they can win the 2024 Premiership. Starting in 18th for me is West Coast. Unfortunately, um, I don't see them doing much more. They've obviously got Harley Reid, but... Uh, they look pretty miserable last year. They've still got injuries and they've still got a lot of things to improve on. Adam Simpson has his work cut out this year. So I don't think they're going to improve drastically. They might gain an extra win here or there. I think they might have closer results than they did last year. Definitely won't be losing um, to a Sydney team who will score over 200 points. That's for sure. Um, maybe. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I don't see them improving in 18th. In 17th, I've got North Melbourne. Again, similar reasons to West Coast. They have a, a better crop of players. They've gone out and got some good trades in. They may see a ceiling of as high as 15th. They might get a couple of extra wins this year. Of course, they play down in Tasmania, and they seem to have a fairly good uh, track record down there. And, and another year under the belt with their youngsters will do them no harm at all. But I don't think they're going to drastically improve just yet. I think uh, next year will be the one where they can jump considerably more. And I hope they're more competitive because their fans deserve it. Um, all 17 of them. In 16th, uh, obviously with a new coach, um, a new fresh look this year, I think Richmond are going to be bottoming out a little bit more. Um, they have the capabilities to be in the top eight. They can relaunch themselves. If Dusty has another healthy year, um, they've obviously lost some big key calibers in, in Rewalt. Um, and obviously, um, Tom Lynch is still niggling around with a bit of injury, and they just don't have the edge that they used to um, a couple of years back. I think they may well drop considerably lower. I don't see their youngsters improving drastically. I do think they have a good crop of players, and I think once you, once you get to the 16th, 15th, 14th caliber, you do have the potential to even jump to 9th or 10th. So I'm not going to rule them out completely. And the last time I predicted someone to be 16th was Collingwood and they end up winning the flag. So, hey, I wouldn't be trusting my prediction at all, but I think they'll finish 16th, unfortunately. In the 15th place, and I think comes with this, is the sacking of their coach. And I think the Western Bulldogs will bottom out even further. Uh, missing the eight last year, I don't think... Yeah, I really don't have any hopes at all for the Western Bulldogs. Um, this might seem a bit weird, uh, and I think Luke Beveridge is a great coach, but I don't think he exactly has the players with him right at the moment. And yeah, you could say I'm a Port fan. I'm quite bitter still about 2021 and the prelim, but this is just a football opinion, and I don't think they're going to cause as much trouble this year. But I, as I said, the caliber between 16th to 9th will be within three or four games, so I I, they may as well um, could be in the top ten, top eight. You know, you never know. But uh, yeah, I, I I think they're they're in a bit of strife at the moment. Um, and if they don't get their confidence up as a group, then I think they're going to be causing a lot less trouble. Fourteenth place is Geelong. Again, I think their 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 placing is a bit unknown in terms of can they jump back into the eight? Are they going to really feel um, you know obviously last year's premiership hangover? Do they come back in? Um, I don't think they do. I think they're right at the stage now where we finally have them in a position. They're not going to make the finals for a couple of years. They're going to have to reassess themselves and really um, dive back into you know, getting some talent. And with Geelong, you know that they are capable. They're going to have you know the revamped uh, Simmons Stadium down there or GMHBA Stadium or um, Skilled Stadium, whatever they call it, Cadinia Park. Uh, it's got 1,400 different sponsors. I think with them, you know, led by Dangerfield, they've still got that good young crop of players, but and they're going to be, they're not going to be some a team that's going to be pumped. You know, they're not going to be a team that's going to be um, pushed aside. I think they're going to be competitive. They've obviously got Jezza Cameron. You know, they've still got a pretty strong back line, and I just feel like they they they're gettable. And once they're gettable, they're a team that can drop off a little bit. So them in fourteenth is my. Uh, prediction in 13th place i have hawthorne i think they're going to be drastic improvers we obviously saw last year 
how high their ceiling was. They've the premiers. Like their their capabilities of um, jumping is enormous. They have some great young talent led by John Newcomb um, and and more up the front there. I think they have capabilities to be just one of the uh, better bottom ten teams in the comp. Uh, and I think they'll get a few scalps again this year. I just don't think they're going to be that pressing for um, for a final spot yet. But we've seen, as I keep saying, that positioning of 13th can be as high as 10th, can be um, pushing top eight. And I think in the first half of the year anyway, um, they're going to be more than capable, more than dangerous of beating some top sides. So definitely be watching and keeping an eye on Hawthorne. Uh, this year, I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing what they can produce. I I do think they've got a good mix, and I think Sam Mitchell is going to really push them into a place where their fans can be excited, and they're going to be really dangerous when it comes to playing them uh, at the G. You know, obviously going to Tassie, and yeah, they're going to be uh, a real force, I think, this year. Hawthorne. In twelfth place, I've got the Fremantle Dockers. Not much to say about Freo. They're, that team that always seems to be in the twelfth, the fifteenth, or the tenth, the eighth place you know they're just in and around they're going to cause some trouble in wa they're not going to do much when they're traveling i don't think they're going to bounce back into the top eight they've obviously lost more players uh, losing lucky Schultz is going to be huge i think they have enough to be competitive but they'd really want to be um pushing back to where they were a couple of years ago if they're going to be any kind of threat this year and jong long mai is going to be really um yeah really pushing it I think he's going to have to get a lot out of his players to be competitive this year. I still think they'll finish 12th because of that WA factor, playing it up the stadium. You know, they're really hard to deal with. They play a brand of footy that can be competitive um, and really take it up to some sides. So we'll see where they go. They, they're kind of unpredictable for me, um, but I can certainly... That would be more, one of my sh more sure bets going into the 2024. Finishing 11th is Essendon, which means the streak of days playing a final and winning it... Um, Will continue. I don't... They're one of the teams that are very capable of being in the top six. We saw that at the start of last year. I just don't really feel confident in them. And I don't know what it is. They've obviously gained Xavier Dersman, a couple of other recruits as well. They're going to get some injuries back. They need some career best seasons from players to really be capable of finishing in the top eight, top eight and getting that goal of winning a final. Can it happen this year? Yeah, absolutely it can. But I think the derailing of their back end of 2023 is a real sign of immaturity for me. And I feel like for them, they need another season, another preseason under the belt, another season to really kick into gear for them to be a real danger come September and playing in September. I can be wrong with this. I've always been wrong with these predictions and I don't want Essendon fans to come at me for it. But it's just a personal opinion where I think... They're not quite there yet. Another year. Just like North and just like um, Hawthorne, another year where they can take the next step. And I really will think um, they're capable. But there's 24 games in a season. Like They're going to have a real uh, a real load to um, push themselves and get, uh, get their wins up and make sure that they continue on. If they can cement themselves, then I think they're going to be a real danger come September. But that's a big if. In 10th place is St. Kilda. For me, the game recruits, I think St. Kilda are very competitive. I think they're going to be a real dangerous side this year. What will get me is the massive improvements of um, teams in and around them. And I don't think St. Kilda have that yet. I don't think they've gained enough in the offseason to say, hey, we've got a real, um, real good team here. We've got a capability of um, beating the higher sides. And I think... You know, they pushed themselves real well in the first half of the season. I think in the second half, they're just going to be... Uh, they were, sorry. They were just not there. They got the wins they needed to. They bet Geelong, and they were competitive. For me, I think they're one or two more players off. They probably, as, as the same as Essendon, need a couple of career-best seasons. If they get a full season out of Max King and um, you know, a, a real force up, up, up front, they've obviously gained uh, Liam Henry. I think their wings could work well. They're dangerous at Marvel. Um, you know, I think they're going to be in and around the mark. I wouldn't be surprised if they make the top six again um, if they get the right mix and right formula. But who knows? You just don't know. Um, and when you get to that 12th to 11th, 10th, 9th position, you're just throwing names in there because your top eight is not certain and they're going to be battling it out. Um, and who's really listening to a YouTuber from Adelaide? Like, come on. In ninth place, I've got the Gold Coast Suns. 
The Bridesmaids of Ninth Place will finish there again. Dimmer's going to have um, a lot of great potential. I think they've got a great youngsters, obviously getting Academy players coming through the draft. Um, and they're going to have a real strong base. Another year of Noah Anderson. I think another year of Ben King. Um, I think they're generally a great chance to make the eight this year. And I would love to put them in there. There is just something about the top eight for me that I've got coming up that is just enough. And I'll explain that a bit more in a minute. But for Gold Coast, I think overall, all they have to do is win enough games. I think they have that X factor to play finals. They just need to win enough games. They need to drop, uh, be more consistent. They don't need to drop games where they... The one game for me, obviously, was the Gold Coast, uh, was the Carlton game uh, at the MCG where that was the game that Carlton flicked the switch and Gold Coast turned off for the rest of the year. You know, And that's what I think they need to improve is those games where they travel away, they seem like they're fantastic, and then all of a sudden get pumped by 60 points. They need to fix that Gold Coast. Uh, they need more games where they played like against Adelaide in Darwin, where they just ran all over them and were just fantastic for four quarters of footy. That's what we need from the Suns. If we get that, if Gold Coast make finals for the first time this year, then the AFL is a better place. Fans, I think, would be happy. They want to see them make finals. And I think... They want obviously they want to make finals too, but with Dimmer as coach, they've got all the right puzzle pieces. They just need to put it together. Okay, let's get to the top eight. Now this is the uh, where it gets a bit saucy, um, and I think a couple of these predictions may be something that I'm feeling as if you know, I'm feeling iffy about. I feel iffy about all these season predictions, but there's general reasons for each one. So let's just get straight into it. In eighth place, I've got the Demons. You can't go two years in a row straight sets and all of a sudden bounce back and think that you are premiership contenders again. That for me means you are, it's like Port Adelaide as well. You are, you know, regular season bullies. You get to the top four and then when, when it comes to finals pressure, you crumble. Collingwood game, missing set shots, uh, missing shots in general kicked themselves out of the game. Same with Carlton. Should have finished it with five minutes to go. Let them back in the door again. That is a mindset. That is not a skill-based thing. Obviously, we know goal, uh, goal kicking is a mindset basis. They've been terrible at goal kicking for the last two years in season and um, you know, going into finals. So I think if they get that right, they've got the players. We know they've got the players. They've got the potential. They've got the right coach. They've got everything. But I think off-field, off culture-wise, there's just something about Melbourne that's a bit off. And I think that's going to be a lot of people's prediction. And if that off-field drama and culture comes into it, they might bottom out even more. But I hope not. I like Melbourne. So we'll see what happens. In seventh, I've got the Crows. Adelaide, I think, are going to finish in the top eight this year. They've got <laughs> endless amounts of talent. Whether or not they can put it all in one place when they travel away from the Adelaide Oval is another story. They win two or three more games last year. They're playing finals. They are taking a lot of teams out. Um... I don't see their ceiling as high as what commentators think. I think they're not mature enough. Um, another year will do that. They have, Adelaide have the wide, you know, the ladder of, they could finish in the top four or they could finish in the bottom four. Like that's the sort of to uh, type of team they are at the moment. Um, I think injuries in this preseason is definitely going to um, derail them a little bit. I definitely do see that Darren Burgess correlation of, they're super fit, but once they're super fit, they can be injury prone. Um, and injuries to certain players at the wrong time of the year could definitely derail their season. Taylor Walker is the X factor here. He has another season where he kicks 60 plus goals and has a game where he kicks 10 and 9 and bullies West Coast. I think, yeah, they've got the right mixture down uh, up forward. The midfield's good. Down back's a bit of a question mark, but I think they've got good placings. And I'm very confident. I don't like it. But I'm very confident they're going to cause some damage this year. In sixth place, I've got the Swans. Recruiting was awesome. They just managed to play finals last year. You don't go out and recruit some big names like Grundy and Adams and getting some depth with Hamling. And um, I'm sure I forgot a couple of extra names as well, but they have a good mixture. They've got a, a good Ruckman now. Um, and I think, yeah, obviously they lost Buddy, but he was no loss um, in terms of you know, how they're going to structure up going forward. They've got some great youngsters. Um, will be led by um, Heaney and Parker and all their um, senior players as well. Look out. I think Sydney are going to be a real force this year. Uh, in fifth spot, I've got GWS. 
you don't go through having a fairy tale season without um, you know being confident coming back. They've got a great culture. I think they're led really well by Toby Green. It scares me that you can have that well of a season and drop off dramatically. We've seen it before with um, these types of teams. And Adam Kingsley is a great coach. He won't let them go astray. I have full confidence they'll be playing a home final in 2024. Um, whether or not they'll be as good to be playing in a prelim and being kicking away from a granny um, is led to be bel- uh, seen. I think teams, they got teams at a good time last year. Port Adelaide. Um, you know, I think they're they're more than capable. They got to St Kilda, and then they got to um, yeah the prelim against the eventual premiers, who seem to win every game by less than a goal. So they're right there. Whether or not they can have a full season again, that's my question mark. Obviously, their um, season last year was very much questionable until the back half of the year where they started playing great footy. If they do that for a full season, then they're finishing top four and being well in advance to be a uh, premiership contender. In fourth spot, I've got Port Adelaide. Um, my boys, my opinion on them is very, I'm, I'm almost certain this year there's a top four spot. Um, and that's just my confidence in the group we've got. Um, we're very good in the regular season, the home and away part of the year is no trouble for us. It's getting to the prelims, it's getting to the semis, it's getting to the finals. With the uh, gains of Asawa, Radigalia, Brendan Zerk, Thatcher, um, Jordan Sweet, Ivan Soldo, real depth in both departments where we needed it. We've got great midfield. Um, we've got a great forward line. Um, the back line has now been improved. We've got the right mix of youth and elderly. I think Port Adelaide's best chance is obviously 2024. They won't drop off as people predict for the later parts of the year uh, and in future years as well. It's obviously the question mark of whether or not they could hit the sweet spot. And that door is shutting for a premiership. Um, and Ken Hinckley has the pressure on him. This is the year for him, and he's got to do it. Um, so fourth spot is you know, about right in terms of our fixture, in terms of uh, Port Adelaide's capabilities, and also you know, playing Adelaide Oval almost guarantees 10 wins a year. So we'll see how that goes. I just think they're not there. It, it'll be, for Port Adelaide, it's on the day. Overall, though, as a package, they're not better than the top three teams I'm about to mention. Speaking of third... Carlton. I had them fifth last year and I got bang on right. I'm going with third this year because they're in a sweet spot. They've got fan momentum. They've got the names. They've got um, confidence. Um, pretty good in terms of off-season and pre-season. Obviously, we won't know exactly how they're, they're panning out. They've got two of the best forwards in the comp. Greatest midfielders. A uh, very steady back line. Whether or not they can relive the fairy tale again is yet to be seen, obviously. But that fairy tale is a has a sequel. And right now, I'm thinking it's going to be 2024. Top four this time. The confidence will be sky high. Um, I'm bullish about the Blues. Very bullish. And if Collingwood and Carlton play in a grand final in 2024, we won't need Russia and America. That's already World War Three. In second spot, I've got Brisbane. Um, home and away specialist, play at the Gabba, great crop of players, grand finalists. Will it hurt? Will it be like Sydney and drop off? Who knows? I just think they they've got a great. They're in that sweet spot again. Um, they're like Carlton. They're going to be very confident, very opportunistic. They've got a good list, as I said. They've got a good fixture. It's just about whether or not they can get that extra quick uh, kick towards goal. Um, so we'll see how it all pans out. And, um, yeah, that's all really, I really need to say about Brisbane. We know what they're capable of. It's just about you know being consistent, uh, getting those wins at the Gabba, playing away and winning as well. And uh, if they can do that, I think they're going to be very successful in 2024. And first spot, you wouldn't have guessed it, would you? It's Collingwood. Um, I think their confidence is so high right now. They've won a flag. It's very hard to predict anyone else finishing top spot. Um... They're probably in their Richmond era at the moment um, in terms of they might go back to back. They're going to be playing in a, in a prelim granny, you know, AMCG. They've got the big stages. They've got the big names. They've got the big recruits. Everything is pointing to an, a, a direction of another flag. It's about whether or not they can, um, you know, if it depends if they have a premiership hangover, really. 
and going by all reports, I don't think that's going to happen. So I'm predicting them to finish top. All right, let's finish this off. Let's get through the Brownlow medalists and the Coleman medalists before we get to the premiers for 2024. My Brownlow medalist this year is Sam Walsh. Um, got great votes last year. I think he's uh, had a greatest, the greatest of final series for his team. If he has a full season without injury, he is getting three voters left, right, and center, um, and I will predict him to win it. Um, along with Nick Dacos and, and Connor Rosie right up there as well, I think. Um, and Butters and all the youngsters are going to be coming through and shining their name through. So Sam Walsh is my prediction for the Brownlow medal. My Coleman medalist, I'm going a bit different this year. Uh, I am predicting Nick Larkey. Although North are 17th, no one else kicks their goals. So if they're averaging 10, 12 goals a game, um, well, he's going to be kicking eight of them per game. So... Line him up for 160 goals this year. And what you've been waiting for, my 2024 premiers of the AFL are Collingwood. Playing in a grand final is always difficult. Playing at the MCG is always easy for them. I'll do it again, and I think they'll do it. Probably either against the, one of the top four teams. Um, probably Carlton, uh, if I'm honest. I think Brisbane and Port are right there. Uh, if they can get over there, you know, sort of woes about... <laughs> Well, Port's finals woes and Brisbane obviously getting over the grand final last year. Any team, though, can win it this year if they're in the top eight. There is a lot of dangerous sides. Our Collingwood are going to get lucky enough winning close games again. Um, you know, who's going to jump inside the top eight for the first time in a while? Who's going to cause the upsets? There's always one team that jumps out of nowhere and surprises everyone. I'm looking forward to 2024. You know, the excitement's building slowly. Um... And yeah, let's hope I get more than three predictions right. Because that's my average for the last seven years of doing this channel and doing these predictions. About three right I get. If we can get more than three, happy days. Thank you for watching, everyone. Make sure you see, uh, leave a like, leave a comment about what your thoughts on my predictions are. Let me know your thoughts on your predictions as well. And, and I'm looking forward to the year, as I said. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Uh, plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content to come your way. Boys, Pez and a pod are out, obviously, for um, the podcast there. Um, most, many more guests are to come. Glass Table is coming back soon as well, so get ready for that and plenty more content to come your way. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, my name's Anthony. Come the pair.